This is a new technique for us here at Sweet Pea. This is putting in a zipper into a panel. So we're going to be stitching our placement line for our, our batting. And I'm only just use a layer of batting for this, this panel because I've got a bag stiffener in the panel that sits behind it. You'll see it in the design, but this is the front pocket panel. So this is a slip it, slip the hand in pocket in the panel and then also a zip a zip inside this panel piece itself as well. So it's got double functionality. Here is we're stitching out the window. This is the window where we're going to do our fabric folding and place a zip behind it. So trim our batting out. And we want to trim up to the stitching on the inside of this window, not the outside, the inside of the stitching. The stitching has been made slightly bigger um, compared to our finished pocket, so as we can do this on the inside, we do not want these layers separated. Okay, so there is our, our letterbox or our window. So let's place our fabric right side up on top of the hoop. I've got some interfacing on the back of my fabric. And that's mainly so as that when we come to trim and turn for our pocket, the fabric has got a little bit of extra fortitude. I don't really want it to be limp in a single layer of fabric because it will fray in the corners. And this fabric especially is very light on the underside. So we have attached our fabric around the edge of our hoop. We're going to place our embroidery on top of it, which is just a very simple little embroidery. And then we are going to actually stitch the window again through this fabric. And we're stitching through a single layer because the stitching is slightly moved in. I've used a, a matching thread. So in case we get any stitch grinning, it won't, won't matter. Open up your, your lining piece and put the fold of the lining piece about at least a centimeter up from the right hand side of the window. So this is wrong side up, right side down, so it's right sides together. And we've stitched the window out again, and we're gonna stitch you a cutting line, which is quite unusual. We don't normally do this, but this is a new technique. So I want you to actually just make a, a snip into here and snip to the corner as closely as you can. Too far away from that corner snip, you're not going to get a nice sharp corner. Too close to it, there you might find that you'll get fraying. So it's an in-between thing. It's trial and error. First of all, with a tip, with, I'm only using the tip of the iron to do this pressing. So I want to press each side and the two ends so as that the bulk of the fabric is away from the, the stitching. So we're just stitching, we're pressing against the crease. This helps us turn the pocket through. Now just gently push those through. We're going to make sure that, that, that our hoop has been really well supported when we're doing some of this and also making sure that we've got hoop tape and we have pinned our stabilizer to our um, hoop edge. So I've put a rubber mat underneath which is sort of not the same shape but it's smaller than the hoop and that's to support for me to press on and it's for me to support the hoop so as I'm not pressing the stabilizer to the pressing surface. I'm just it's slightly elevated and it helps me stop stretching the stabilizer and pulling it out of the hoop. You've got to be gentle with this. Gentle but firm would make the sound silly, but this is not impossible to do. It's actually quite easy after you've done it a couple of times. Um, pull those ends out, make those ends quite square. I'm just using the tip of the iron. I'm not putting it on flat. It looks like I am, but I'm really not. I'm using the tip of the iron. Now, if you actually pull your lining 
away uh, from underneath, you can actually make that line disappear. I've used, I would use the same color lining as my pocket, okay, so you can't see this. But so I've used yellow purposely to show you this is what it's, what, this is what's happening. I don't actually mind it being yellow myself there, but um, my square, my corners are nice and square. I am pinning the lining underneath. Through, I'm pinning all through all layers, and so the lining is being caught underneath, so as it's not going to be in the way when we come to putting our zip in and what have you. So, I'm just going to put a um, a little bit of um, either sticky there or just pin that to the uh, top layer. Right. So here's our zip. I've taped it at the ends, while well, at the top end. Now, you are going to have to move the zip when you're doing this, okay? You're going to have to move the zip runner when you're doing the stitching, so you need to slow your machine down and watch it like a hawk. I am just going to put pieces of washi tape over the top of this. Now I press it down into the teeth. I want it to be there quite simply as a holding tape. I don't want it to be too vigorous. Um, like I don't want to tape down the whole end in the sides of the zip because you're going to be stitching through and you're going to get drop stitches because you've got so many layers there. So we're going to be stitching around this machine really, really slow. Just watch what's happening here. We're going to be starting at the bottom and working up. Okay. Just... Now I am going to be starting and stopping and starting and stopping. I'm watching with that zip puller. Look, it's sitting there. Stop, machine. Find the zip puller. Pull it away. We want to see where it is. Stitch as far back as you can before the machine hits that zip puller. Foot up, bring it forward of the foot. And keep the teeth of that zip tightly buttered together. Don't want it to be a gap there. Okay, up, down we come. It's not all that hard. It just looks, it just looks complicated, but it's really not. You've made a window. You've put a zip into it. You've stitched it down. Very professional. Oops, nice and blurry. Take our tape off. We're doing a row of satin stitch as a decorative, and then we're going to lay, a, lay on a piece of lining, which is going to be the backing, the backing of this pocket, because this pocket is a slide-in pocket. Place it on, and then once it's in position with no puckers, triple stitch it into position. So remove our pins. Let's just get rid of our lovely scissors. Okay, so there's our lining. You use the top edge of the zip tape for your line to fold over, so that's the top of your pocket. You need to trim that zip back so as it's just a centimetre out from the edge of that stitching. Okay, there's your pocket. I want to just trim that seam back to about a quarter of an inch and then clip into my stitching. 
because it's a curved seam and so it needs to sit nice and flat. So we want to stitch our pocket bag around. We've basically folded our pocket along the top edge of the zip tape towards the bottom of the um, of the panel, and we're just sewing our pocket bag around the edge. Curved corners, they last longer. Um, and then just trim any excess off so as it's sitting inside the boundary of our our um, our block. Okay, so that's what we're, we're basically governed by the width of that zip. And I'm just going to do a little row of understitching. So understitching basically stitches up against the edge of the lining. All your bulk is facing the lining. As the seam's not open underneath it. And so what that will do, now we have clipped, is that when we go to the iron, we can actually press the seam, and you'll find that your lining should disappear inside um, um, that pocket and you should not see the lining colour on the outside it should sit nicely back the idea is for that to be hidden even though it's right up to the very edge and that's called understitching now we need to have it so as that's our pocket shape um, but we haven't got any pocket shape on the outside so um, it's a square so on the inside, when we look at that, we do actually have that that um, curved line. Just stitch quarter of an inch out from the edge of that curved line to give yourself a um, uh, a stitching line to use from the front to actually sandwich that pocket inside between the uh, front of the panel and the lining. Okay. So we're just going to follow that line again and stitch around that curved line we've just stitched in. Then we're going to trim back half an inch from that stitching and voila, we have our pocket bag. That's going to be a slide-in pocket as well as a pocket bag and zip.